Hello everyone, it's Sarah, the Tudor Travel Guide here and today we are talking about Mary Queen of Scots and some of the most iconic locations associated with her. I want to share those with you and we also have a special guest coming along today because as you will probably know from my blurb on the Facebook group, um, we are announcing some very special tour dates today. So, and um, so for those of you who, who don't know me or are watching this live later on, on record, uh, I'm Sarah and I'm the founder of the Tudor Travel Guide. So your visitor's companion to the houses and castles and manors of the 16th century. So as I said a little bit later on in this chat, and as you know, I, I like to keep them to about 20 to 30 minutes although I've got a little sneaky suspicion we might go a little over today because towards the end of this chat we'll be joined by our guest today and that's Philippa from British History Tours and so I'll be welcoming her shortly. But in the meantime I wanted to share a little bit of my um, of, of some of the key iconic places associated with Mary Queen of Scots but before I do that there's a few more people arrive so it's 9am in California and Massima is in Rome that sounds lovely and um, I'm glad you're all hearing me loud and clear. So I've got about five locations I want to talk to you about and, and because of the timing I'm not going to go into any of them in great detail but I just want to give you a flavour of some of the places that are most associated with Mary and that you might want to put on your uh, Tudor itinerary and also of course I'll be telling you at the end how you can join me in going and touring Mary Queen of Scots Bonnie Scotland next year. Now I just want to say up front I think one of the amazing things about the locations in Scotland is that they are they're fairly raw and authentic so whereas quite a lot of you know the Tudor palaces in England sadly have been lost I think because the Scottish monarchs really abandoned Scotland when James the first, uh, James the sixth of Scotland became, became James the first of England, um, they were kind of just left, and there wasn't a civil war that tore them down or burnt them to the ground or whatever. So a lot of the places are still in quite a raw and authentic state. So you really can follow in the footsteps of Mary Queen of Scots and stand in some of the very chambers and rooms where some of the most dramatic events of her life took place. And I've got a little shiver of anticipation just thinking about it. So let's talk about some of those. You may have seen a couple of them in my blogs. Um, so we're gonna start off, as you might expect, with um, Linlithgow Palace. Now, Linlithgow Palace, and I see if I can just bring up a picture for those of you who don't know what Linlithgow looks like. Here we go. So. A picture of Linlithgow Palace here. It's about midway between Edinburgh and Stirling. Um, there was a medieval palace, but this particular palace was commenced at the beginning of the 15th century by, I think, James I. And he'd been released from captivity in England and he went back to Scotland and he started building this amazing palace. Now, interestingly, I understand this was the first palace created for the Scottish monarchy or labelled as palace. So he built this grand building. It was in three ranges around a central courtyard. And the other thing I think that you really notice when you go to some of these Scottish uh, castles and palaces is that the architecture is so different to the architecture that we're used to, you know, that warm red brick, Tudor brick. It, it's, it is like, and it is going to a different country, then that's because the architectural influences when these buildings were being put together were very different. Yes, they did borrow a little bit from the English, but but the, the European influences from, from France and Italy, and I think there's also quite strong ties to Denmark architecturally, um, makes these palaces, as you can see here on the screen, and I'll just get rid of that for a moment so you can see me again, makes them really different to the kind of places that we're used to. 
So of course Linlithgow was the birthplace of Mary Queen of Scots and actually it was the birthplace of her father too. So um, what happened in the development of the palace was that original three range courtyard house was added to by adding another wing which became the west wing and that was the privy apartments of the monarch. So you ended up with this quad quadrangular palace um, centered on this beautiful, and I shall just show you this. Oh no, I'm not gonna show you that one. <laughs> I'm going to show you this picture actually. Um, so this is the, the, the quadrangle in Linlithgow Palace and you can see just how staggering and how beautiful and how very majestic it is. And it was there in the west wing of the palace, in fact the northwest tower in one of the, uh, in the Queen's Privy Chambers that Mary Stuart was born uh, in December 1542. And so it's, it's, it's very much the place where you might want to start your journey when talking about Mary, Queen of Scots. Okay, so um, if we just move on now, and uh, I don't know, have any of you been to Linlithgow? That would be good if you could let me know. Maybe some of you have actually visited for yourself. And if you have visited for yourself, what did you think? As you can see, it is in ruins today, but there are substantial ruins. Um, so um, really somewhere that uh, is, you know, really moving to visit. Okay, good. So let me just um, take that down for a moment. There we go. So that's Linlithgow, and I'm gonna be keeping a lookout, see if anybody, um, we've got a few more people join us now. So we've got Janice from Sussex, and hi Gillian, and um, Andrea, is it Andrea? Andrea from the Netherlands. And of course, Catherine, lovely to see you back, Catherine. That's great, and hi Joyce from Ohio. So, fantastic. So, the next, um, and we're kind of following in Mary's footsteps because of, of course, Mary spent the first four, five years of her life in Scotland. And soon after she was born, um, Henry VIII was still alive at this time. He quickly got his eyes on wanting Mary to become the potential future wife of his five-year-old son, of course, Prince Edward. But the courtship, well, it wasn't the most romantic. And in fact, um, Henry's, Henry's courtship of the infant queen is now known as the rough wooing. And in fact, uh, Mary of Guise, who was Mary's mother, never really wanted an English alliance. She wanted to align herself with the French. And so what she did was, and quite cleverly, she kind of wrong-footed the English, got them on board in terms of moving Mary to Stirling Castle. But actually what she wanted was for Mary to be further away from the grip of the English in a, in a, in a, in a castle which was much more impenetrable. And so she took the little Mary to Stirling Castle. And here you can see a picture of Stirling Castle. And, and this is in fact where Mary spent most of her early years in, in, in the rest of her early years in Scotland before she traveled away uh, from, uh, from Scotland. Sorry, I'm just really reading your, um, thanks Natalie. I love your chats. That's great. So, um, so yeah, so Stirling really was Mary Queen of Scots home. It was the only Scottish home she really knew for those first few years. And it kept her and her mother Mary safe during those times. Um, now also if we kind of were, we're stepping chronologically out of step a little bit, um, but um, it was actually, if we go, if we fast forward, it was actually also at Stirling Castle that Mary probably first fell in love with Lord Darnley, which of course was to be such a, a cataclysmic and fatal match. He fell ill at Stirling Castle and, and it was at Stirling that Mary tended for him. And, and it is believed that that's where their kind of romance ignited into what became a very, very short-lived, passionate affair. Um, but we'll maybe touch on that in a moment. So that's Sterling for you. Um, and from there, I'm, of course, um, Mary 
At the age of five, was taken to France. She spent much of the rest of her childhood and her teenage years in France before she came back to Scotland, aged just 19 years old, cultured, sophisticated, articulate, and very beautiful. And the Scottish people adored her and she was given a wonderful reception as she arrived in Edinburgh. And I say that, of course, because Edinburgh has to be a must stop for anybody who wants to follow in the footsteps of Mary, Queen of Scots. And now, again, I'd love to know if any of you have visited Edinburgh. So, um, of course, it's um, I know it's a major place that, that many, many people who are come over to see tourists, uh, see Tudor places in England, very often travel to Scotland and put Scotland on their itinerary and Edinburgh is right up there. And of course, there are two very, very, very historic and iconic locations in Edinburgh associated with Mary. And the first of those is Holyrood and, and probably Holyrood out of all of the places associated with Mary has, has probably the strongest connections. Um, it was at Holyrood that um, Mary finally, after a very short and passionate romance, married Lord Darnley, much to the dismay of almost everybody around her. And very soon that would include Mary herself. By the end of the summer, she had had enough of this geezer. He was a nightmare, uh, arrogant, drunkard, always getting into problems. Um, it was never going to go well. And of course, it was in Holyrood that her secretary, uh, David, um, I think you pronounce it uh, Rizzio. I'm trying to do the Italian pronunciation. I know we've got a couple of Italians here, so maybe you can help me out. Um, so, um, of course, one evening in the Queen's apartments and she was entertaining some of her closest circle and after dinner um, Darnley and some of the men who'd been put up to kind of get rid of, um, well actually the plot was to get rid of Darnley but Darnley didn't even realise that at this stage. Anyway, that's another story. But they burst in on Mary with, with David and some of the other members uh, that were with her and essentially, of course, he was dragged from the room, begging Mary to save his life before he was stabbed multiple times. Um, and Mary herself, of course, probably quite rightly, felt very much that her life was under threat, but managed to um, do a neat little bit of sidestepping, get Darnley back on board and get herself out of a very tricky situation. However, the point is, all of those events took place in, um, I think it's the, um, it's the, the main, one of the main, I think it's the Northwest Tower at um, Holyrood House. And all of those apartments still exist today. So you can absolutely go and stand in Mary's bedroom and in the kind of the little closet or oratory that is attached to that room and um, really just stand where those events unfolded. And because it's such a small room, the sense and the energy is incredible. So that absolutely, Holyrood is absolutely right up there. Now, just to move our story forward a little bit, um, and I'm not, again, I'm not gonna go into all the details, but of course you also have Edinburgh Castle and having, seen these horrendous, horrific and traumatic events unfold before her eyes. Um, Mary no longer felt safe at Holyrood, so she retreated to Edinburgh Castle. And of course, she was very pregnant at the time. And of course, it was at Edinburgh Castle that she would then give birth to her son, who would all too soon become James uh, the Sixth of Scotland. And of course, ultimately, uh, James the first of England. So you've got two amazing locations uh, right there in, in, in Edinburgh itself. But of course, Mary's story doesn't end in Edinburgh. Um, again, 
maybe we'll talk about this at some other time, but things went drastically wrong for Mary over that, that, that kind of summer of 1567. And essentially she was ultimately, um, she ultimately faced off her Protestant Confederate lords at a standoff at Carberry Hill, which is to the southeast of Edinburgh. And uh, having been deserted, rather cowardly in my opinion, and I think most people's opinion, by her, her then husband, um, Bothwell, she surrendered herself into the hands of the Confederate lords, thinking that she was, upon promises, that she was going to be treated well. Well, of course she wasn't, and she was taken back to Edinburgh and suffered the most horrendous abuse at the hands of the crowd and at the hands of her now guardians. And then, of course, Mary was taken off. She was then imprisoned. This was really the beginning, although she had periods of fleeting freedom, very fleeting freedom. This was really uh, the beginning of the, 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 the end of Mary's free life. And after a couple of days of being um, under guard in Edinburgh, she was taken to our final location that I want to share with you today. And that is the just beautiful Loch Leven Castle. So this is Loch Leven as you can see, and the little castle in there. Now, Loch Leven today is a lot larger than it was in the 16th century. At Mary's time, the waters would have lapped against the castle, um, but it was, um, it was on um, the 17th of July, 1567, that Mary arrived on the shores of Loch Leven. And, oh, let's get rid of that. Yeah, Mary arrived on the shores of Loch Leven and was rowed just after dawn across the loch to the castle. And even though this is a small place, um, again, such dramatic events associated with Mary took place there. So you can imagine she was probably in quite a state when she arrived and it was not long after that sadly she would miscarry of twins. Of course, Bothwell was the father. She was only about three months pregnant at the time, but the miscarriage left her drained and, um, you know, very, very weak. And unfortunately, shortly after that, a very rough and angry and unapologetic group of Confederate lords arrived on Loch Leven and they basically, essentially threatened Mary with her life if she didn't comply with their demands to abdicate her throne in favour of her young infant son. Tearfully, in the castle there at Loch Leven, which you can still visit today, Mary signed those papers but saying that if she was ever at liberty again, she would not abide by what she was signing because she was forced to do so. Now, of course, Mary did eventually the next year escape from Lot Leven and she was on her way to England for another 20 years of imprisonment before she would eventually stand on the scaffold at Fotheringhay. And I guess nobody could have even imagined that would have been the case when Mary was first born um, in such auspicious circumstances in the palace at Linlithgow. So anyway, I have shared, I know it's, it was fairly top line and we've kind of gone through these um, quite quickly, but I just wanted to share some of the locations that um, you will be able to visit with me um, next year. And in a moment, I'm going to bring our guest in to talk about that, because as you know, we are going to, we've been talking about this for a week or two now, but we haven't yet shared the dates of the tour with anybody. So we'll do that in a moment, but I'm just going to take a moment to have a look at your comments here. So where are we? Let's see what we've got. Uh, thank you. Love your chats. Could listen to hours. Oh, that's really kind. Thank you very much. And Gillian, yes, it's brilliant. The castle at Holyrood. So Gillian, you've obviously been. Um, Anna, sadly never ventured to Scotland. Yes, it is a long way from Southwest England, um, but I think it's probably worth it. Um, and Ian, I'll drag you in, Ian. Let's, we've got a comment from Ian. Can you see that folks? 
I don't know whether you can see that. Oh, that doesn't seem to be showing up. I don't know what's happening there. So I'll just go. Anyway, Ian's saying Stirling Castle is amazing. Okay, and remember the guide being bit bitter. The jewels are in Edinburgh, not oh <laughs> Edinburgh, not Stirling. I see, right? Yeah, I get that. And Elizabeth, not visited Scotland yet. Would love to go. Was planning on the sleeper train. Oh yes, yes, that would be quite atmospheric, wouldn't it? Wonderful. Okay, so I think it is now to in time to introduce our guest. So I am now going to bring in, uh, if I can, <laughs> there we go. I'm gonna bring in Philippa. Hi, Philippa, you are now live to the Facebook group. So welcome. Hiya. Thank you, thank you for having me. Uh, so Philip has been listening in the background as we've been chatting, folks, and um, some of you, I'm sure, know Philippa um, uh, from British History Tours. But maybe Philippa, you just want to introduce yourself and British History Tours for a moment before we talk specifically about our tour. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. So I run British History Tours, which um, I started in about 2012, uh, mainly sharing stuff online about where people might want to go and why and um, because, because by that, that point, point I'd been travelling around myself for about 15 years and I noticed that people would, I, I mean I spend a ridiculous amount of time, like probably most of you do, um, in places just like absorbing the atmosphere and just trying to get as much information I can and learning when I'm there and people would just walk through these rooms and or, or in, and I'd be like, how do you, you miss, you miss loads of stuff and I really wanted to share, like I wanted to stop people and anyway, so I started just doing sort of Facebook and I don't know when thing, other things came online, Instagram and stuff, started doing it that way and then um, decided to do it proper job uh, and actually organise tours about three or four years ago and so yeah, so, so hence doing tours and and we do group tours, so um, and but all his all history linked, all it's it's basically doing what I what I wanted to do. It's it's it's, it's taking people to where they're going to love and telling the stories and doing this whole you know yeah. few days where you can really concentrate on the stuff you love. Great. Yeah, absolutely. I, I totally get it about that. You know, that it's so easy just to visit a place, walk through it. And yeah, you can really enjoy it. But if you really know the stories and really know what to look out for, mm. the, the whole thing just gets so much more engaging and interesting. So I'm completely with you there. So we've been we've been talking, we've been planning uh, our tours for next year. And of course, you know, we have the September tour, which is the On Progress yes. with Anne Boleyn, which maybe yeah. we could talk about another time, which would be very nice. Yes, um, yes, yes. But today we are concentrating on the Mary Queen of Scots tour. So as I say, we've been talking. Um, can you can you give us a flavour of what the agenda would be and how that might pan out for people who might want to join us? Yeah, so the tour is going to be four nights, five days, um, obviously based around Edinburgh, Edinburgh because we're, um, we're going to all the locations you have outlined um, in, in, in your uh, bit before. And we're going to try and do them well, as in chronological order as possible, um, because the idea is we are, as we've titled it, following in the footsteps of Mary and her story in, in Scotland. Um, so, so we're, we're, we're staying, staying in a really lovely hotel, hotel which has some links to Mary, um, slightly on the outskirts, so we're in a sort of more leafy place, um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, we always go for nice places, because the idea as well is, um, I don't know if you all feel like this, but when we love going and visiting places, but it can be quite intense, kind of, because you are just trying to absorb all day, so the idea um, with, with the tours is we do that, but we also get to relax and stay in nice places and this one has a pool oh. and things like that so, you know, um, and have nice food and have nice um you know um rela relaxing as well on the evening I mean, we do we're going to have talks and things like that as well aren't we yeah so, yeah we are um so a little bit of luxury with your history which i think is a oh, lovely yes, combination yeah. oh it's that's, yeah, it's just the way I always imagined it, and yeah, that's the way we do it. <laughs> that's great. So yeah, so so folks, we are going to literally be following the footsteps of Mary Queen of Scots. So we are going to be going to those places that I mentioned, and there probably will be a few other little surprises and extras along the way too, right, Philippa? 
Yes, we're hoping so. Things we can't sort of... We've got a few things up our sleeve, haven't we? We so, do. Um, yes, yes, not that we can divulge yet, but yes, yes that's there will be other bits. Yeah, okay. So, da-da-da, fanfare. When is all this going to take place? So, so the, the dates date are the 20th uh, of, till the 24th of June next year. Right, okay. So, yeah. guys, this is the very first time we're announcing these dates anywhere um and it's going to be midsummer oh my mm -hmm. favorite time of year i mean june in i mean obviously that you know well, it's people... basically this time next year isn't it, it really so... is isn't it so yeah. like <laughs> forget this weather we'll be fine <laughs> we'll be just spot on so I, I don't know about folks out there you know some of you obviously are from the uk and there are people all over the world but may and june are my absolute favorite months in the uk because Okay, you can't always guarantee the weather, but yes. you get everything's in bloom. There's so much, there's so much colour and and everything's still lush. And of course, you get these very, very long days. So at this time yeah. of the year, it's light till nearly ten o'clock at night. Yeah. So yeah. you can really, really make, and it's it's light from like four o'clock in the morning. So yeah. you know, if you want to get out of bed and have if a you want to get out of bed, walk, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It, it, I love it. I love this time of year. So I'm so delighted um, that we are going to be making our trip together then. So, so folks, um, how's that sounding? I know Monica said it's sounding great. And Anna says, sounds, sounds amazeballs. I love that. Amazeballs. Amazeballs. <laughs> love it, Anna. And, and, and Catherine, tempting. It would be lovely because obviously there are, you know, you guys, there are lots of very familiar names there. It would be absolutely lovely to see you in person oh. okay so so where do people go and how can people find because it's not actually booking yet but it, tell us about when it's booking okay. and where people need to go to get more information or etc okay. yeah so um you can go to my website which is britishhistorytours.com I chose a name for a company that I can't get out forward slash history tours but you'll see it on the menu anyway. And, and if you click on um, In the Footsteps of Mary Queen of Scots there, then at the moment you can uh, sign up to get information because what we're doing is on Wednesday, uh, the tour is being released to the people who subscribe to this, basically our VIP list, if you like. And um, the reason we do that is you don't get seven days to book on before it goes on general release. So anyone on that list gets all the details and the secret link to, to book... Um, uh, before, before it goes on general release and you know we have had tours in the past which have booked up in that in that week so um it's it's free it's fine you just have to put up with me occasionally sending you some of my videos which you know you can take or leave as much as you like um, and uh yeah and then you get the, you get the information to your inbox great and so general and then general releases is, is a week later as you were saying general releases is a week later. later yeah so so i think guys you know if you are at all interested um the other thing we're going to do and because i had this slight tech issue i had it all set up there was going to be a really groovy link on the page and 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 woohoo uh, but of course you know technology being technology it defeated me at the last minute um but we as soon as this is over i am going to paste a link to the page that philippa is talking about in the comment section so just give me a few minutes after this is over five or ten minutes i'll post a link so check back and that will take you straight to the page where you can register your interest so if you mm -hmm. are interested um i heartily recommend that you sign up and so i think i think that's probably it so let's just have a so lottie saying it's going to be amazing sounds great and dawn is chewed tastic excellent we've got, we've got <laughs> Oh, I'm loving these words. You guys are great. You are the just the best. Um, so, um, yeah. So I think we're done for the time being. So um, I'm going to thank Philippa and I'm just going to let you go, Philippa. So mm -hmm. if I, I'm just going to move things over. So, um, yeah. okay. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so, so guys, it's just me now. And um, I just wanted to finish up by saying that... Um, I hope to get to see you, some of you next year on tour. As I say, there's the Mary Queen of Scots tour in June. And then we also have the On Progress with Anne Boleyn. If June doesn't suit you or you want to do something more Anne Boleyn focused, that's happening from the 2nd to the 6th 
I think, <laughs> of September. Um, but again, and but again, you can find that information quite easily on Philippa's website. Now, I want to talk to you now just before I go about next week. Um, so I it was going to be Tracy Borman talking to me on YouTube next week live, but we've had to roll that back a week. So now Tracy is going to be live talking about some of her novels. Um, and of course, any other questions you'd like to put to her uh, on the 11th of July. And in the meantime, some of you just might have noticed that my audiobook, uh, the audio version of Le Ton Viandre, a novel of Anne Boleyn, volume one, got officially launched today. Yay! Um, so um, what I thought I might do, because I've had a few people emailing me saying, oh, could you do a book club? I'd love to do a book club with you. Well, I want to say I am going to do a book club with LTV. Um, it might not be straight away. I'm still figuring out the timing. But in the meantime, I thought that I could do a live next week answering any of your questions about LTV. So if you've read the book, you can, I'd love you to either email me or post in the group or even in the comments under this video, any questions that you might have that you want to ask me as the author about how did I write it? Why did I do this? Why did I choose that? Etc. Etc. What's my favourite bits and all of that. Um, and maybe I thought that would be quite fun to do next week. So next week we'll be live here at five in face Facebook talking about LTV. Uh, if you haven't read the book yet, God, there's links everywhere about how to buy it. So um, again, I could post them here, but I'm sure you can find them. Uh, it's If you look on Amazon, Audible, you'll be able to, for Le Ton Viandre, a novel of Anne Boleyn, volume one, you will be able to purchase world, worldwide. Although I noticed um, that um, a couple of folk have had problems buying the audio audio book who are not in US, UK. So I don't know what that's about, but I'm gonna investigate. So my friends, let's have a quick look um, at what we've got here. Um, we've got um, Andrea's just signed up. Yes, go, love it. Um, and um, uh, Nicola, wow, sounds amazing. Um, yes, thank you as well. Congratulations on the audiobook. Woohoo. Woo um, okay, so Anna, the tour is so tempting. Yes. <laughs> I'd love to meet you, but um, there you go. See, see how you go, eh? And um, Mary Ann sounds great. Okay, LTV on volume two. Dawn is asking. I think you're asking. I am actually working on the edits, final um, edits for a a second edition of LTV volume two, and I am hoping, 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 hoping that I'll be able to get it out around. August time so that you've got your summer holiday read even if you're having a staycation so that's my plan <laughs> there's lots 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 going on and I just want to thank you guys for turning up again if you're listening to this on catch up I always keep track of the comments so I do try to reply to people this video will be reposted on YouTube as as it is every week so if you want to catch up you can replay it in the Facebook group or you can replay it on YouTube. And also remember, if you're not yet subscribed to the blog where you can get all my info, it's www.thetudortravelguide.com. And um, anyway, guys, I think that's it for tonight. So thanks so much for tuning in. It's been wonderful to see you all here and uh, look forward to next week. Okay, then. Bye. Mm -hmm.